all right okay good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i uh, welcome you all to the fourth day of this webinar strength and conditioning for strength and power sports uh so as usual i would like to let you know that okay at the end of the session we will be having a qa so we have enabled our chat feature it's on the bottom side of your screen so if you have any questions uh, do pop them in there and if you miss anything don't worry we'll be still uh, having the recording version of it and then probably we'll be sending it to you so as usual uh, we'll be having dr abhimanyu who will be there to sum up the two presentations in hindi after the second talk and uh, those who are interested please do stay back to understand more about this sessions in hindi so today we have with us uh, chia bun chong is the co-founder of senior and uh, personal trainer for omni strength and performance so he is a conditioning specialist so bun chong was uh, malaysia's karate national champion winning a silver medal in the team event at asian karate federation championship in 2007 He spent seven years in the National Sports Institute of Malaysia as a strength and conditioning coach. He was the strength and conditioning coach and high performance team lead for national karate team, who was Asia Junior Champion and World Third Placing and Asian Championship uh, champions. He has also played a vital part in the preparation of uh, the. one of the state in malaysia called as pinang in games like silat swimming volleyball team which outperformed their previous personal best and medal targets in their uh, national championships so apart from coaching high performance athlete he has more than 8 years of experience in personal training and group training His goal is to empower his clients to maintain a healthy lifestyle through exercise and making good food choices. Currently, he has his own company based in Singapore, specializing in strength and conditioning as well as body transformation. Let us welcome Bun Chong for his presentation entitled "Planning and Implementation of Plyometric Training." So we'll be witnessing both theory as well as practical aspects of plyometric training over to you buncho hi 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 everyone uh, <laughs> thank you dr saju for the invite uh, so dr saju contacted me to ask whether i'm interested to give a talk to you all and i said yeah sure you know uh, we can just do some sharing uh, thank you dr saju for introduction so today right <laughs> uh, i'll be touching a bit on the theory very very bit There's a lot of coaches here, right? Uh, those are you all, all are mostly are coaches, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, what is more important is, of course, uh, the theory is important, yes, but application in uh, the real life, application in the field, is equally as important as theory. So, uh, sometimes what what you read in the book doesn't really transfer directly to the practical side, uh, and you need to change a bit here and there. To suit your sports, your needs, am I right? So that's what uh, that's what I'm going to do right now for this whole talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not an expert, of course. Uh, if you ask me a question, I try to answer what I can answer. If not, I will direct you to a certain uh, books and people to 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 get and to get more answer from them, right? So I'm also learning. Uh, everyone's still learning, right? The more you read, the more you expose yourself. Yeah, the more you do, you say you do not know anything else. Okay. All right. Uh, let's start. And if you got any question, just shoot. Uh, those are just just to stop me, and then I will just answer impromptu or after the session. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen with you right now. All right. Okay. So, uh, so this is uh the gym I work at. Uh, we have we have a co-sharing space. So. These are my clients doing uh, certain type of sports. We have runners. We have uh, I have runners with me right now. Currently, uh, open sea swimmers, uh, triathletes. I'm also currently still advising the national kata team on on the training program. 
And yeah, I've been in sports for quite some time, but then transitioned to the private sector. Uh, okay. So uh, about me, as, as, as Dr. Saju have, have spoken just now, right? I was formerly a national karate athlete, and as an athlete, I transitioned to a strength conditioning. Uh, it's, it's a very, not a complicated story, it's very easy for me to transition over. Uh, so I've spent seven years in the National Sports Institute of, of Malaysia. I was the head of the Penang Satellite Center. Uh, I spent three years in personal training and ultimate performance after I left the institute to come to Singapore. Actually, I followed my wife and my wife got a job here. So all over yeah. all right then uh, i was a former snc coach for the national karate and squash team uh the state uh snc coach for state karate volleyball badminton floorball and hockey athletes i work very closely with dr saju especially in swimming for our athletes and we are the first uh, few states uh, in malaysia to implement uh, biomechanics uh, monitoring and uh, post free post uh, program implementation so uh, we talk about plyometrics, correct? Um, plyometrics uh, is about force action reaction. When it's force action reaction, uh, you want to be explosive enough, that's number one. Uh, you want to be uh, fast enough, the velocity has to be there in every single moment of plyometrics, okay? Of course, uh, you can argue that plyometrics is not purely about speed and power, it's about power endurance as well, right? Uh, if it's power endurance, of course, there's a different uh, approach to it. If it's uh, pure power, there's a different approach to it, okay? Now, I want to keep in mind that uh, plyometrics, we take into consideration the short, uh, stretch shortening cycle of the muscularity, uh, mass muscle, correct? So, uh, when that comes to play, there's always uh, one which we have, we take into consideration the eccentric concentric of the muscle which is a push push or the just the concentric force where we eccentric we hold there and concentric a few sports that have that particular uh mechanics right uh, characteristics is like uh kata in karate kata which is uh, we sit in a low stance at the same time you need to explode at the same time that's one uh cyclist where it's just there, there is certain position and push pull yeah, there's, uh, there's only uh, a lot of time spent at eccentric level and suddenly you explode, okay? Uh, for plyometrics per se, you need to be uh, sport specific at some, uh, most of the time. But when, before it comes sport specific, you need to look at the basic of plyometrics, okay? So, <laughs> if you're talking about planning for your plyometrics, right? You need to consider one each of the athlete. If you are training 16 years and above, what can you do, what you cannot do. You are training like uh, younger athletes, maybe uh, before they hit puberty, 12, 11, 10, what they can do, what they cannot do, all right? And then the training age of athlete. Yes, you may have a 16 year old, but he, he or she have not touched at all uh, plyometrics. That means you tend to jump, they jump like Bambi or in a crude way, jump like an, a not a smart person, an idiot, right? So that, that you have to take into consideration as well, right? Uh, that comes to learning ability as well. Is the athlete able to grasp what we want to say, what we want them to do? So those are a few things that uh, you must take into consideration. So it, and according to the essentials of strength conditioning and training and conditioning by, by the NSCA, uh, the ground contact time, that means every single repetition you hit the floor, for a beginner, it's 80 to 100 uh, repetition of uh, contact time to the floor. Uh, intermediate, 100 to 120. Advanced, 120 to 140. Yet again, this is all uh, an uh, advice, okay, a guideline. You need to change accordingly, right? Of course, the younger you are, you need to half the, you need to cut the volume by half. Or the older you are, if you're training uh, veteran athletes or maybe 50, 60, 70 years old athletes, right? You need to cut the uh, contact time or repetition by half. You know, that's an example. Then from there, you slowly move it up, the repetition. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So, as according to the uh, strength conditioning for young athletes book, uh, science application. So, if 
you are you are training a pre puberty athlete which is around 6 to 12 years old for male 6 to 11 years old for female uh the advice to have uh, all these criteria 6 to 10 uh, repetition per exercise only you can increase the exercise from 6 to 10 but intensity it should be low okay it can be a moderate to fast reaction what are uh, low intensity uh, plyometrics it can be a skip it can be a, a very low hop it can be a skip rope skip okay, it can be a bit of a uh, very slow bounding those are all minimal uh, low intensity loading right as you go up the age you can actually push the intensity of the athlete itself right why because pre pubertal the athlete have not developed the muscular strength or bone density to do uh, high impact uh, plyometrics high impact plyometrics can be jumping on the box and jumping down on the box or at, at, at higher level or uh, you're going to go tuck jumps at the high tuck jumps at the high repetition as it so if you're talking about uh pre pubertal athletes they're not recommended to do all these things but taking into consideration how long have they trained have they been doing constantly you know uh so like my daughter does gymnastics right so if you look at gymnastics per se it's a lot of high impact uh parametrics am i right but if you look properly at their training program right their progress comes from very subtle jumping that means they do like bounding a lot on the trampoline less impact on the joints then from the trampoline they progress to harder and harder uh, mechanics right so my, my daughter is now doing tuck jumps 10 tuck jumps she's six years old 10 tuck jumps three sets but then it's high impact but before she reached high tuck jumps three sets she was doing a lot on the trampoline and slowly slowly progress taking into consideration how well the athletes uh, recover and stuff like that okay so <laughs> uh, i'm pretty sure everybody will say that oh plyometrics means uh, they have to be very very uh, you know good they have to jump high they have to do very fanciful stuff but uh, that is not, not my athletes, right? If you see the picture, then my athletes, it's very impressive, yes. But if your athletes are not ready to do such jumps, right? You have to scale down everything. You teach them the basics of jump, squats, uh, lateral jump, lateral squats. Okay, these are very, very important for, for the athlete itself, okay? You cannot be like, you cannot do like, okay, you'll come to me, right? Let's do a depth jump of uh, 40 cm or depth jump of 50 cm. Right, you you will kill the athlete, right? So you must take it progression by progression, okay? And okay, so implementation, okay, implementation. Uh, what I am very con uh, I'm concerned about when no matter who comes to me, you can be a national champion, you can be an Asia champion, uh, you can tell me that you won multiple championship. I will always regress you to the most simple basic movement. When I regress you, then I see how fast I want to progress you. So it's very important to consider regress to progress, right? Uh, every day you want athletes to succeed. You want them to make sure that they go very good mechanics before you progress them to harder and harder exercises or higher repetition, okay? <laughs> okay, the most important thing as well before implementation, you must check for movement error. If the athlete's leg is like, uh, you know, duck leg or a bow leg, you know, the, the knees cave in, if they address that error, you know, see what's wrong with it. If I teach them to legs out, knees out, is there any movement of the ankle? So this, everything has to put into consideration. If you cannot correct it, you have to look for other experts to help you uh, correct it. Can be a physio, can be a biomechanist, can be a physiologist, can be anyone to help you to correct the athlete's uh, weaknesses, which I say, right? Of course, choose easy exercises first, then progress from there, right? Uh, it, can, it can look very, very boring, but believe me, once the athlete uh, have managed to master the basics foundations, anything you give the athlete to do is like, I got it, okay, fast, I get it, I got fast, okay? Uh, one case is my floorball athletes. Floorball is a very fast game, right? Yes, they are very fast on the floor. They can change direction fast. But I regress them 
Okay, I regress them. I give them very simple basic movements. From basic movement, I slowly progress to stronger movement, uh, more, more complicated movement. For the more complicated movement, right, I managed to reduce from their average season, uh, eight to nine injuries per, uh, per, 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 per team, to just two, two, two injuries, All right? Of course, I wasn't like that last time. But after I went through a, uh, a lot of courses, a lot of uh, talks, especially from Lauren Lando, uh, he stresses that fundamentals are important. Okay, uh, you do not do calculus, you do not do uh, divide and uh, divide and multiply before you know the basics of uh, plus and minus. Am I right? So that's that 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 stick to me. So you understand that you need to base uh, uh, need to master the foundation before you go on to harder progression. Okay. Okay, uh, these are the easy, basic, uh, important, uh, which, which I feel is very, very important type of uh, theory other than oh, affirmation, eccentric loading, uh, stretch and reaction of the muscle, or the muscle spin, the muscle tendon, the tendon. Um, most coaches want to know straight on, how many reps I must do, how many sets I must do, how long must I rest, and what type of exercises I can do, am I right? So, is, if you look at back it just now, I think Mr. Tajun will share with you the slide later. Uh, it's about six to seven exercises for, for parametrics. It can be a three, it can be four exercises. Um, depending on if it's uh, speed and power, you're looking at 10 repetition, eight repetition max. You're talking about uh, muscular endurance, power endurance, sports, right? You can play with time, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, one minute or, or 15 reps or 20 reps, okay? Um, I will usually start with two sets, progress up to five sets, 10 sets, okay? Uh, the book will say three to four sets. Uh, rest time, two minutes to four minutes rest time. But in the end of the day, you have to look at the athlete. Are they ready to move as what you want them to move? Okay, are they ready to, to, to hit the, 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 the exercise again before they start to fatigue? All right, so, this, so um, in a parametric session, you can go up to the max of four or five exercises, and then you can go from three sets until five, six, seven, ten sets, depending on your objective itself. All right, okay. Uh, any question before I move on to the practical side of it? I think the questions uh, towards the end will be better um, so that you now there will be a continuous. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Although, uh, right. So I will do the practical right now. Yeah. Uh, I will mute my computer and I will start with the. All right, so can you hear me, everyone? Yeah, can you hear me, all right? Okay. So it's very important. I would like to start my athletes, uh, my athletes up with barefooted. Why barefooted? Because I want to look at their legs, at their foot, at their knees when they do a certain type of uh, exercises. So very simple one. I always start with, okay, let's do a squat. So my go-to, especially my go-to, when they, they come to me, I will look at how they squat. If they squat this way, that is knee valgus, ankle will be this way, okay? It's over uh, pronated ankle, and then they're not ready to do a jump until I correct them. So if they are doing this, very nice squat, up and down, knees out, okay? And again, it's good, very mobile here. Then it's very important. Then it says, okay, let's progress to your, your power metrics right now. Okay. If not, I will say that, okay, you know what? Uh, I will regress you. I will put you there to the strength program before I push you back up to the power metric program. I will correct every single thing for the squat itself. Okay. So uh, the next thing I want to do after I see that, okay, they're very good squat. Okay. Everything is nice. Right? I will tell them that if you're doing a jump, especially a jump, right? It's about uh, triple extension. Ankle, knee, hip, 
jump up, triple extension, and come down. Okay, Samantha, go there. Okay, you're gonna go down, up. Okay, this is a jump. Most athletes, even though they are jumpers or, or they are veteran athletes, right? They will jump this way. Right? So that is not, they, it's not utilizing the full body strength of triple extension. So what I will always do, I will always start off with a triple extension, yeah? So you're gonna go up, you progress, like up, I want them to pull up and drop down. When they drop down, I see, I will look at their knees again. Is it this collapsing? Okay, or they are dropping down this way. So for the muscle to absorb the movement, especially when you jump up, up, boom, all right? So you need to know that, the athlete needs to know that, no problem. Up and down. The knees must go forward, butt must go down, and body must be up. This is what them to do, okay? It's now, are we regressing? Okay, regressing to this first. I want them to go up, pull their body up, and drop. Okay, pull their body up and drop. So I will see whether they move here or not. If you can correct it, then it's okay. All right? From there, I will do very subtle jump. Okay? It's a palm jump. It's always one same first, okay? A palm jump. So for a palm jump, yeah, you can be here. Right? Very easy. Up. Palm jump. Palm jump. Okay? So these are regression. So when you do a palm jump, that's it, you learn how to absorb the force when, run, uh, when landing. And then so know that I must push off half and push and stick it down there. Right? If you don't do this, most athletes to do this, you do this, in other day, the mechanic is wrong, when you push them harder in parametric endurance, they, they will get injured. You say, oh, my knee. Right? So make sure that every single connection is always good. Right? Okay. Once the palm jump is okay, I will start by jumping onto a box. Okay? Onto a box, very simple box. Okay, very simple. <laughs> it's very, very short box. Because it's all about techniques, right? But techniques. So from there, you're going to go up and jump. Two same thing. You need to go forward a bit, absorb the legs, stand back up, and come back down. Okay, from here, you're going to go up again. You're going to go up, jump, <laughs> land. Okay. This simple progression from a drop jump to a pump jump to jumping on a short platform to a complete jump. You want them to push as fast as possible, as hard as possible. Okay? So, in power metric, once the athlete lose the velocity, lose the power, rest. You guys don't want them to do, do nonsense anymore, right? You want them to learn what is speed, what is power, right? So, but if you're doing talking about uh, power endurance, yes, we can push athletes to, we can push athletes to uh, almost failure, but it's very, very important to stress form. So once the athlete is doing nonsense, they can't do very nice squat, very nice explosive, okay, under fatigue, stop the test. You get me? Then, let them rest, no problem. Two to four minutes rest, then let's go again. Always rest on form, okay? Once the athlete has mastered the jumping upward movement, for me, I will just introduce the drop squat jump, the palm jump for the first two lessons, okay? Then I'll stick to this first. Uh, four sets, five sets, two to three minutes rest, 10 repetitions only. We can drill into them the correct form. After that, then we can progress to lateral jump. Okay? So, lateral jump, same thing. 
Okay, so jumping there is forward, side, turn. So I like to practice the lateral jump. Okay, your lateral jump, same thing. You want to go not so high, just pump up and land. Make sure that there's no land, the land, there's no internal rotation of the leg and pronation of the ankle. All right? So you look for the ankle, look at the knee. Okay, you're going to go up, jump, land, up, jump, up, that. Okay? You have to stick. Stick the landing, teach them how to land. From there, you slowly, slowly power on stuff to them. Right? Once you go to the left, you go to the right. Okay? It's palm jump. Up. One. Two. Three. Four. Okay? If you actually are doing this, in the jump side, uh, then you know, actually it's not ready to do anything else. Right? So make sure that we grasp first and then teach them the mechanics and then you can do more complicated stuff. Okay? Then from here, same thing. Same method as the jumping up and down. Uh, very, very short platform. Okay? So jump up the platform. Very simple. Up. Then come up. Right. Down again. Right. Down again. Okay? Simple. Then from there, we progress some more to turn most sports, your team sports, there will be jumping and turning and reaction, all right? Uh, but for the karate, karate is more of a uh, pattern, okay? So, how to jump and turn? Same thing. Short jump, short jump, okay? You're going to go up. Instead of turning 180 degrees, go 90 degrees. Up, two, four. 90 degrees, up, stop, up, stop, up. Then from there, you can progress to jump. Simple? Yes? Yeah? Okay, from here, slowly but surely, you try to increase the intensity, the height of jump, the speed of jump. Okay? Uh, I will not uh, advise you to jump and spin onto the ball. Okay? We want the athlete to be efficient, but we don't want to destroy the athlete. What if they miss the ball? Yeah. To me, basic and play safe wins everything else. All right? Okay. From this, from this, only I will start to introduce a broad jump. Yes, broad jump is easy. You can do it anytime. No, no. If the athlete does not want to jump properly, a broad jump with higher impact. Uh, the, depending on the distance you jump, the landing will be a disastrous thing. So in this important thing to teach how to land and jump properly. Okay? So. <laughs> jumping far is always sticking. Right? Always sticking. So you jump, up, jump. <laughs> Stick. Up again. I always learn them to Jump this way, right? Uh, the key point to introduction of broad jump is you don't jump far, you jump close. From the close jump of one single jump, go up, stick, down again, swing up, stick, down again. From here, you introduce them short jump, double jump, okay? Double jump. And go one, two, six up again, okay, and double jump and six, right? So, progress from double jump to triple jump, from triple jump to four jump. <laughs> Once they master that jump, where it's a uh, fast reaction to the ground and up again, after tell them that okay, right now I want to increase the distance of the broad jump or the height of the of the of the box jump, okay? So the distance of the jump can be as one meter, two meters, three meters. Always regress back when you introduce new intensity to it. Regress back to a, a one, one jump, single jump, far. Then start with a double jump far. So for example, you're gonna go start with a single jump far, 
Up again. Okay. Now we're down for up. And then and so on and so forth. Okay? For a broad jump, it's about contact time of the, of the uh, floor, correct? You want it to move fast and recover. Fast and recover. It's all about uh, for them to recover, think about the form, and jump again. Okay? When you, when, for me, when I introduce metabolic biometrics to my, my, my athletes, my clients, right? I keep it simple. I keep it very, very simple. Single jumps, side jumps, very close one, okay? Or maybe some burpees, uh, some parameter burpees as a metabolic. But I will never do complicated stuff, complicated stuff as a metabolic and strength conditioning. Because in the end of the day, right? Coaches understand. <laughs> Which is more important? Your sports or them performing in the gym? Your sports. Us as uh, strength conditioning is supplement the coaches, right? Supplement the coaches. So strength conditioning programming has to supplement you. Okay, so you know to be so fanciful. As long as athletes can perform at what the velocity, the power, or the endurance that we want, then everything is okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> you, you think that oh, but my sports are a lot of one day good. So when do we introduce them? Uh, I will introduce them after they have learned the vertical jump properly the broad jump properly, then I will introduce very simple lateral jump. Lateral step, you indicate. Okay? So, I will always start with a double leg, and I will pump to the right. Pump. And ready. Okay? Same thing. And again. And go. And again. And go. Okay? What you want to look at the same thing you look at. Knee positioning, is it here, is it here, is it here, is it here, okay? Knee position has to be correct. Athletic stance has to be always there, okay? If you, if the, if you want to stick, if you're not a martial artist, they're more of like a reactive style of sports, a team sports, record sports, right? Where you don't need to balance, let them, if they miss the balance, put down, or you can skip a bit, it's okay. But if you're talking about uh, martial artists, uh, is kata athletes and karate, wushu athletes, or silat athletes, right? Or gymnasts per se, where balance is very important, I will force them to go into a balanced position. Every single jump, every single thing you do. Okay? So, let's say for kata athletes, right? My view, your kata athletes, balance is very important. You're going to palm jump for me, boom, you're going to hold, hold, hold. And then come back up again. Uh, palm again. Pull, 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 up again. So from very short jump, lateral jump, then I'll ask them, okay, let's go further. Okay, let's go higher. That's how you're going to do it. Always regress to the most simplest basic movement, then increase the height, increase the, the power of it being jumped. So from lateral jump that used to it, I will go for a zigzag jump, a diagonal jump, right? So same thing, double leg, pump, hook, jump, double leg, pump, hook, jump, double leg, pump, hook, jump. Okay, this is double leg. From there, then you progress to arches. All right, so same thing, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, again. Okay, you can start with a one, you can start with one, two, then you go one, two, three. The more jumps, the harder it is. The harder it is, the more error there will be. So you want to reduce the error in athletes. You must make sure that they know how to position their body throughout the movement itself. Okay? Okay. So these are all basic, right? Single leg hop, all right, I can do it. Uh, bounding, yes, I can do bounding with my athletes. Okay? But if you ask me, what if I want to start introducing to them weighted squat jumps? Okay, first thing, are they able to lift? Because in sports, technically you're just doing your body weight, right? You are jumping, you are playing hockey, you're playing badminton, you're playing kabaddi, you're playing kabaddi. It's all body weight, okay? But then if you want to add better power, 
uh, more reliant to people banging you on the, on the field. Yes, the basic foundation before you start a weighted jump is what? Strength. If you know strength, don't do weighted jump. You will waste the athlete. They will come and tell you that, oh, I got a pin and mini here. You know, tendonitis, right? You want to avoid the overuse, right? So, if you want to start introducing weighted jumps or drop jumps from, from the top, right? Regress back to only strength program, all right? Get them strong for the strength program, then push them back up to the weighted power metric, all right? So, weighted power metric can be a jump with a barbell, can be a squat jump, okay? So, let me show you a, a basic barbell jump, okay? Right, basic barbell jump, yeah? So I can squat uh, 2.5 times my body weight. So this is only 15 kg, so it's very light, all right? But if your athletes cannot do that, I will recommend you not to do any weighted jump yet. Just do a body weight jump. Body weight jump, if you do it correctly, be very, very tiring, all right? So a squat jump, yeah? Barbell, you don't want it to move. You want to just come up, up. All right, finish, go down, the harder it is, the more rest you should give your athlete, okay? Because if it's weighted, you want them to explode fast. If the velocity is not there, the, that's, it, it, that's pointless. You want to do parametric statistics, right? It's about exerting the velocity that you want to exert, all right? This is the progression after they can jump high uh, on the normal body weight. Everything is nice. Then only it's starting progressively. When do I give my natural athletes to jump this? After four months in the gym with me, four months of simple biometrics, then I start doing this. Yes, it might take long, but injury rate is lower. The other day, you want them to be less injured, correct? Right? You're doing league games, right? Constant league games. You don't want them to injure. You, don't, you want your star player, your key players, right, to be as healthy as possible. So you don't want to be too fanciful. You want to regress everything and slowly progress from there. Okay? You get me? Right. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. One thing I want to touch on is uh, a box jump. If your athletes are athletes who like to be at a single position, <laughs> if your athletes are uh, athletes who it's always this way. You know? At low position, that explode, bam, they come back in again. So, uh, a box jump. We take away the eccentric loading, the, the stretching of the muscle, and uh, concentrate the muscle. We take away the eccentric part. We load them here, and then, and then explode. Okay? I do this for my floorball athletes, a lot of them. I do this for my karate athletes, right? The most simple one will start from a uh, squatted jump. Okay, jump up, yeah? So I'm not going to jump forward yet, up first. Always up first. Then only you progress forward, okay? Okay. <laughs> so, I'll take a squat. Depending on how long your squats hold. So I'll take kata as an example, okay? Kata at a position after they have produced multiple combinations at one particular hole they will be holding at least two to three seconds. This one, two, three, next movement, right? So my programming, for my athletes, will be almost mimicking to what their squats require, okay? So after the squat, boom, okay, hold. One, two, three, up, two, four. One, two, three, up, two, four. One, two, three, up, okay? Believe me, you try athletes who are always slow, right? After they stand for three seconds, explode for 10 times, right? They feel it. By the six to seven reps, you'll see a lot of funny movement. Be like that, be like that, you know? Yeah, so it's always addressing the form. Always addressing the form. So once they're used to squat jump, then I will get a bench, okay? Sit in the bench, pause there, jump. 
okay? Zero inertia. Because if you do this with athletes, and after you jump, they can cheat. So you don't want to cheat. Progression, eh? Progression, eh? Positioning your body. Like a squat. Like a squat. Okay? This one is cheating. So you want to minimize that. Squat down. All the way here. Pause it there. Okay? Pop here. Then jump. Pause here. Okay? Up. Pause here. And up. Huh? Simple. So this is all progression. Very subtle progression. Okay? So from this progression, you can start introducing, okay, let's go drop jumps. Okay, let's go reactive forces. Let's go hurdle jump. Yeah? If athletic hurdle jump is normal for your, it's very, very normal. You need reaction, right? But before you introduce, if you think back to when you first coach, right? You don't talk about high performance. They're already there. Talking about developmental athletes. Do you introduce to them high hurdle jump or introduce them, okay, basic jump. It's always basic, okay? Sometimes even me, I tend to forget that uh, I've decided basic first. We are all humans. We want to look good, all right? I want to look good. You want to look good. We tend to forget the basic. So after a while, I keep reminding myself, oh yeah, basic first, basic first, basic first, okay? So very, very simple basic first, okay? Uh, then you ask me that, oh, my athletes, it's a lot of lunging motion. Shouldn't I introduce lunging jumps to them? Yes. After they master the simple basic of double leg jump, single leg hop with balance, and know where to position the hip, left, right, or center, then you introduce to them the single leg hop or the speed squat jump. Okay? If you don't understand, uh, if you don't get what is speed squat jump, let me show you. So, speed squat jumps are this. Jump. 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 Okay? This are speed squat jump. Okay? It's harder. Right? So, same thing. At speed squat jump, always jump at one leg push off first. Then, only you start with either speed jump, change leg, or Triple jump or double jump. Same thing. Okay? Always start with basic first. Alright? Start off with three to four exercises of parametrics. Then, slowly progress to five to six. Always remember the rest time. The harder the session for parametrics, reduce the number of exercises. Okay? Can be three simple parametric exercises, but a lot of repetition. A lot of rest. Okay. Next thing. Where should you put it? When should you put it? Okay? Where? Before the first five exercises of the program. If you're doing power, strength power program. Okay, strength power program, right? Always fresh. If possible, Monday, where after a Sunday, you come back refreshed, right? We can have velocity training. Okay, let's go. Parametrics first. First two, three exercises. Always parametrics. Okay? After the parametrics, then you set your strength program, your skill program. Okay? You're talking you want to introduce parametrics into your skill program. <laughs> your skill program has to be after your parametrics. Right? If you're talking about strength, uh, it's going to power, talking about velocity, talking about speed. Okay? It has to be after, before your skill program. But if you're talking about like, okay, I want power endurance, high repetition, on the fatigue, but at good form. Put it after the strength program, after your skill program. You want to, let, you want to just die, go home, right? <laughs> okay, most of us want to just die and go home, right? Yeah. Put it after your skill program, but again, with good form, with intent. What is your objective? What is your intent for a particular day? Okay. 
For advanced athletes, you can do three to four times a week of plyometrics, high impact plyometrics. But for beginner, like the theory it says, start with one, start with two days a week, interval of two, three days interval, then see how they react, then start loading them. Okay, let's start with three. Okay, we choose four. Then keep feedback, any pain, uh, how you look like the day, uh, fatigue. Uh, so from there, you have to adjust every single program you have. Okay? Okay. So once you have, your assets are used to hard surface, okay? <laughs> you want to introduce to them soft surface landing. When introduced to them soft surface landing, you have to regress back again. Double leg, easy jump, single leg, then progress on that. Uh, if you're famous on the graph, yes, very important as soft landing, but then what I, can, what I would like to do is I'll take a very simple mat and put a double mat, a single mat. <laughs> then I tend to jump. Same thing, I tend to feel. Feel the mat and drop. Okay? Feel the mat and drop. If you're okay with it and then you don't see any shift for the hips or shift for the knees, then I progress faster from there. Okay? This one will come after they are used to bounding. They can jump properly, they can land properly. They can drop, jump properly, okay? Then I'll introduce to them une uneven surfaces, right? We can start doing this, go jump, ho, and put down, go again, jump, ho, boom, put down again, jump again, okay? These are all progression for you to do. You don't need to have fancy pool equipment. All you need to do, you can use the staircase, if you have staircase, drop, jump on a staircase. You can use the grass for uneven surfaces. It's very, very important, all right? So that is a program that you uh, can develop. Regress first, then progress upward, right? Okay. Before I finish, the most important thing I want to point out is uh, doing a jump, right? Apart from the triple extension is ankle rigidity, okay? If your ankle, if you jump, if most people jump your ankle, like, uh, you know? Very, very loose, very, very soft. And then it jumps, then. Yeah. That's when injury sets in. Because if the ankle is too loose, and not, it's, not, it's not ready to jump and drop down, it will spray. You will have all these things, which you don't want. Okay? So, remember to tell athletes, when you jump, ankle, yes, flex, down, front of flex this way, but have to be as rigid as possible. We're going to go up, boom, boom. Right? Instead of like, you know, the ankle flipping everywhere. Yeah? So jump up, ankle tight, and drop down. So your ankle is tight, right? Not tight, tight, but right? it's very it's rigid enough to prepare for landing. That is better. Okay? We don't want them to be as too loose. Why is it too loose? Oh my god. Expressive the lateral jumps, right? Initially, the first two years of introduction to parametrics my athlete. I got three to four athletes to always sprain the ankle. I didn't know why until I went for a talk in Australia. I found out that, oh, okay. Yes, you got a point there. Ankle rigidity. So from that day onwards, yep, I stress on ankle rigidity. Drop jump, box jump, lateral jump, all about ankle rigidity. If your ankle is not rigid, you can hold this position and you can absorb the force with all your ankle. There's no point. So if you're flicking, the tendency of doing this, which you don't want. Okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, before I carry on, any more, any questions from, uh, from the floor? Uh, I will ask them to list down the question in the chat box. And then, yeah. I, yeah, I, you can also read, and I will also read, and then get back to you on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Have you finished or you're still continuing? No, I uh, got one more to say. Just, uh, just drop the, yeah. the question. Uh, we'll give around 10 minutes of questions. So, if I want people to ask me questions, you can share experiences and, and what I do to prevent that and so on and so forth. Okay? Okay. okay. So, right now, if you understand all this basic movement, right? Uh, we talk about box jump. So, let me take my box here. Yeah? So you see people have to jump very, very high, right? Yeah, the higher the better. So uh, the higher you jump, 
the more powerful you are, the powder fuller. Yeah. So you don't want to have uh, a box, high box, but you cannot jump high. So if the person don't want to do a triple extension, this is what you can do. Every every do. Mental don't do that. If you do that, son, you will do that. You see? You, you see what I do? Okay? They will jump down, but instead of a triple extension to go into the box, they will suck their legs. And then you stand up. Oh, you jump high. Uh, technically, right? They jump this high only. Right? So what you want to do is triple extension and jump in the box. Triple extension. And slow down. You get me? So you want to go as high as possible, triple extension and land. If they cannot do, it's okay. Reduce the height. Right? Reduce the height. They want to jump high. I said to go up all. Okay? Clear the box and slow down. Right? So they have a hang time. Tell them hang time. When you tell them hang time, you understand. Oh, hang time. So you want to hang as high as possible and land the box. Instead of a tuck jump. That's all right. Right? No point. If you tuck jump, don't train parametric. It's a step up. It's a jump step up. You want to have a triple extension on the box as high as possible. Okay? And up jump. And scroll down. Okay? If they're not ready to jump down, walk down. After walking down, then you start to say, okay, I want to introduce to you a drop jump. Drop jump, start again low, and go back up. Okay? Doesn't mean that you drop jump from the top and you jump high. It's very good. Huh? It's about the lower it is, and you can react fast at low jump and jump high. That is what you want in sports. Unless your sport is uh, jump, diving also won't have that, right? Diving have a, uh, the plank, yes. But then most sports is on the ground, it's this and you jump already, okay? So drop jump, doesn't mean it be high, start low. Start low. Same thing, even this low box, always triple extension on the leg. Triple extension. Okay, the leg, drop jump, short, jump, drop, and drop. This is what you want, okay? Jumping up with full triple extension and drop jump, right? Drop, jump. Same thing, ankle, rigid ankle, Tap and go back up. Okay? You yeah, get me? That's a very simple one, yeah? Okay, there's a lot of questions. Uh, let's go through the questions first before I continue. All right. Uh, Doc, what questions should I ask on purpose? Yeah, on. there are some uh, questions. Uh, how, I mean, go it is not real, I mean, uh, has, has been uh, dealt by you, but then they're just asking. How do you mm -hmm. measure the contact while landing? Sorry, what? How do you measure the contact while landing? Oh, how to measure contact? Okay, uh, <laughs> you can only measure that via equipment, right? Uh, coach's eye, you can't really tell. You can just say, oh, fast landing, oh, soft landing. You need to have uh, what I bought for myself, for my athlete, is I bought a push 2.0. Uh, push 3.0 is a velocity tracker, it's a uh, transducer type of uh, tracker. It's, it's just attached to athlete's arm here and you can jump freely. That you can uh, check the contact time of the contact when you drop jump. If you don't have that, uh, you can just, oh, fast, oh, slow. But then you have true data, you can have uh, a velocity tracker. Let me share with you. Wait, uh, let me try with you my screen. Okay, we look at my screen for Bun Chong. Eh? You can see this one where I'm holding the iPad and also uh, the, the device here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is a velocity tracker I use for my uh, swimming athlete, uh, which asks him to jump at certain speed 
at a certain velocity. Once the velocity drops, that asks you to stop. This one, this device will uh, track contact time of the foot. If you don't have a contact mat to tell you how fast the contact is, then this is the next go-to for me. Uh, why I choose this? Yes, there's standard error to everything you have, but yeah, it's, it's usable. I can take anywhere I want to go, just in my pocket and then go. It's a, a big contact mat. Yeah. Okay, another question. Uh, well, how much of a rust period is required between two sets? Uh, depending, depending. Let me stop the sharing first. Huh? Depending. So, uh, in the in recommendation, it's two to four minutes. Right? Two to four minutes between sets. But, if your athletes can recover fast enough, one minute, two minutes, start the set. As long as, if you're doing 10 repetitions, the 10 repetitions with good intent, with good speed, with good form, then you know the athletes rest fast enough. If that particular set that you're using, okay, if you rest like, okay, two minutes rest. But by the six rep, seven rep, you can see that his form is out. He's not performing as hard as possible as you want. Give them more rest. Also depending on what is your objective. If your objective is strength and power and speed and velocity, the more rest, the more important it is. If your objective is power and endurance, you know I'm going to say, right? Power and endurance. Go for it, but in good form. Okay, another question. What is the optimum knee angles when doing a counter movement jump? Oh, <laughs> that is a very excellent question. Huh? Uh, I don't really believe in this optimum. Uh, it's very acid dependent. Uh, my, my own, uh, after we have, uh, Dr. Saju will know that we have tried some acids, right? The optimum level is like, what, uh, 90 degrees or hundred of uh, 70 degrees, right? But the particular activity is not doing the part, the, the height that we want. For us to say, okay, choose your own depth. That bloody fool <laughs> can jump better than the optimal it is, right? So yeah, yeah. it's very acid dependent. Some athlete is very powerful here. Some athlete is very, I need the full range of motion to go, uh, go power. So my, my key point, choose your depth, jump high, jump fast. If you jump high, jump fast, you know, so be it. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, there is one uh, question from Damanpreet Singh. Uh, he's just asking, do you use Olympic lifting uh, mm -hmm. for working on triple extension? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I do use uh, Olympic lifting for triple extension, <laughs> but uh, also very athletic dependent. You have to take a lot of time to teach them the Olympic lift, which suits the sport itself. It doesn't have to be a very good clean or very good, uh, very good uh, snatch, right? Uh, <laughs> that will be my phase four, phase five type of uh, movement. My phase one, two, three, phase six. Okay. Uh, I mean, Bunchong, actually, uh, see, we had uh, done a research project on swimming, uh, you know, plyometrics. Uh, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just could you just speak uh, one or two minutes on those uh, plyometric set of exercise? What you did for the swimmers? Okay, for swimmers. Uh, so <laughs> the background athletes, uh, background athletes. Our well, athletes are all 14, 15 years old, 16, max of 17 years old. We are talking about youth athletes, uh, the youth games in Malaysia. Uh, <clears throat> so we wanted the athletes to, as you know, as swimming, what determines. Uh, the final point of swimming. The start, the push off, and the start, the tumble turn, right? So the tumble turn and the push start is a very important factor. Uh, we, we read that parametrics will help in the tumble turn and the start. So we started off with a uh, very basic biomechanics which Dr. Saju helped me to analyze. He will help us with everything on that. Uh, what my part, we started to introduce them simple biometrics, but that's what we did uh, today. Simple biometrics, okay? Uh, we started with double leg jumps, make sure that everything is nice and good, performance first, the form is correct. Then, 
I went to into very specific jump. Very specific, very swimming specific. Yes, it might create imbalances, but performance is the primary factor for sports, right? And then talking about health, health and fitness. Yes, uh, I must have both legs equal strength, blah, blah, blah. blah. But you're talking about swimming. How does swimming start? <laughs> swimming starts from here. If a kickback and it's here, always here, and they two jump. All right? So after I teach them the basic fundamental motion, every single session, here, up, two, down, up, two, down. Okay? Starting leg is left leg, you're gonna start from your left leg. Then, with a double leg jump, with kick off to the wall, which is here, that's what I'm gonna do, we're gonna jump up. Very simple. We started with uh, three times a week of, of parametric. I give the coaches very simple guidelines of like three, two to three sets, uh, two to three times a week, three to four exercises only. After implementation of uh, three months, in the second of you, three months, if not mistaken, uh, we have a pre, mid, and post uh, test, biomechanics test, and post development test. We found out with a three month program of biometrics, uh, two to three times a week, two to three sets, eight to 10 repetition with high rest rate of two to four minutes, their force production increases. Okay? And with the biomechanics, that's, 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 that's just help. That's how you, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> that just help. We managed to correct the angle of takeoff, the most optimal angle of takeoff for each and every athlete, right? So Saju, just sit down there and tell this athlete, okay, your angle is just better, you turn lower, okay? See that there is an uh, optimum angle, but not at all athletes are the same. So from there, we have a standard deviation that tells each and every athlete what is optimal angle, where to aim, how to aim. And the kickoff from the wall, is it double leg, is it single leg? Then, at post, we managed to increase all their power production, increase their biomechanics capability of the swimming. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, we, we did quite well, yeah, Sajuya. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Any questions? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Let's see one more question. <coughs> uh, okay, there's a question from Harpreet saying, if distance is concerned among three to four box during jumping, so that Time, what, what, so that time, what will we consider? Whether whole stretch body jump technique or tuck jump technique? Oh, sorry, I, I don't get it. what the question is. Can you repeat? Yeah, now actually it's something, if distance is concerned among three to four box, okay, if they, mm -hmm. you have three to four plyometric box, mm -hmm. so do you the jumping, so what, uh, what will you consider? Whether the whole body stretch Jump or okay. uh, tuck jump technique? Tuck jump technique. <laughs> so if you have a tuck jump technique, right, you won't be jumping far. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. you are jumping here. You get me? So, okay, let me show you. Eh. <laughs> tuck jump, yeah. So if the athlete can, there's always the optimum uh, angle of jumps, right? Yeah. Right? So yeah. you tuck jump, right? You tuck jump. This is a tuck jump, right? A broad jump is about full extension and try to hit a particular angle of, of jump, all right? Yeah, it's around 45 degrees, yeah? So, what we're gonna do is jump, full stretch of the body, jump. Yeah? You can tuck, but the angle of takeoff is more important than anything else. Right? But in the end of the day, what is your intent? Let's go back to intent. You wanna teach them to have a good bound, a good reaction. Yes, start jump first, then go for distance. If your objective or intent is go for distance, technique, full stretch, and go take off, that's more important. Okay? All right, Wen uh, Chong, uh, yes. I think it was a very indeed, I mean, it was a very good session. Uh, you have practically shown uh, how to do the plyometrics basically starting from the regression to slowly to the various progressions what you have made uh, while doing the exercise and also you focus one thing which normally all the coaches 
uh, fail to observe is that uh, the position of the knee while landing. Okay, so that mechanics part uh, you have stressed it a lot, which actually uh, you know uh, reduces lots of injuries. I think this will be very much essential uh, part of uh, learning and teaching uh, of uh, this uh, when you are doing climatic type of exercises. And uh, <coughs> I think even for the beginners, the coaches should stress. In fact, identify these problems at an early stage and then probably it to be done. And if that is done, I think uh, lots of injuries can be. Uh, you know, uh, minimized. Uh, I thank uh, Bun Chong for such a wonderful presentation. And uh, it was really very good, in fact. Uh, yeah, hope to keep in touch with you for more, some programs like that when, if it is possible. Uh, and yeah, probably when you're free, please do visit our centers, tra site training centers, and then you could have some uh, exchange programs all right. Uh, thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, uh, thank you for invite, the invite. Yeah. Uh, I, I share what I know. Uh, I'm not an expert, as I told you all. I learned a lot. Uh, and I just uh, take and modify to what I've experienced my athlete. Okay. Uh, not one size fits all. You need to change depending on athletes. If you don't change depending on athletes, that means you're too rigid to a certain movement, then it, it doesn't really work, right? And uh, stay safe. Yeah, uh, uh, Singapore is slowly opening the economy. Hopefully, yeah, when so the economy reopens, I can, I can travel to you, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to bring you. All right. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Buncho. Yeah. Okay, see, see you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you all coaches. Uh, see you for the second session at uh, 3.45 p.m.